My name is Armie Hammer and I play Maxim de Winter. In the beginning of our story, we find Maxim at the end of a sort of six month sojourn that he's had to get away from Mandalay. Uh, he has started the process of reincorporating back into society after taking some much needed time off for himself to sort of collect himself, gather his thoughts and all of that. Um, and we find him in the south of France. He's, uh, he's in Antibes, he's in Monaco, he's in all those sort of places where the people of that time would go to summer. And while he's there, unexpectedly, he finds the new Mrs. De Winter. You find Maxim and he's a bit of a wounded bird. You know, I mean, he's definitely got some damage. Uh, and you don't even understand why. I mean, certainly the new Mrs. De Winter doesn't understand why until they go back to Mandalay and see sort of what he has run from. The new Mrs. De Winter is a new chance. It's a new lease on life. It's a breath of fresh air. Uh, he has been in a long-lasting toxic relationship that, for those who have read the book or seen the original Hitchcock film, know that it ended really poorly, about as poorly as a relationship can possibly end. Uh, and he's been on the lam, he's been on the run, uh, both from himself, from the law, from, from all of that. And enter this new woman who has this sweetness and purity and almost innocence that certainly the last Mrs. De Winter and the late Mrs. De Winter didn't have any of. So it's a chance to start over. It's a chance to sort of say, this is what I want in this new relationship. Unfortunately, Maxim is also carrying a lot of baggage with him and that starts to affect this new life that he's trying to, to start with the new Mrs. De Winter. When Maxim meets the new Mrs. De Winter in France, uh, it seems like she, well, not it seems, she is the first person he has ever spent time with that gets him out of his head and gets him out of thinking about the situation that he has been running from for so long. He can sit and talk with her on a veranda for hours and never think about his past and never think about any of the prior trauma that he's suffered through. Uh, and he thinks that she is sort of like that balm. She's that salve. She is that thing that makes it all better. So I'm gonna marry you and, and, and this is our new chance at life and I'm gonna take you back to Mandalay. And she is, you know, in and of herself, that solve to make those wounds feel better. But the problem is you go back to the side of the original trauma and no matter how strong of a sort of balm she's able to be, she can't cover the wounds. Uh, you know, I mean, there's still a lot of triage necessary for Maxim to get over everything that's happened. Um, and he thought that she was, strong enough a force to do that. And you quickly realize that he's going back to a haunted house, albeit there's no actual ghosts there, but it's haunted by memories and she's just not quite enough to cover up all the memories that he's been running from. You know, it's a very funny dynamic between Maxim and Mrs. Danvers because Mrs. Danvers originally came with Rebecca, his prior wife. Uh, she had been with Rebecca since she was a child and Rebecca really ran the house. I mean, she called all the shots. She, in, in the most sort of graphic and, and belittling ways towards Maxim. And it was always Rebecca and Mrs. Danvers as a team. So now Rebecca is out of the picture, but Mrs. Danvers still has some of that power. The home itself is a pressure cooker. You know, I mean, as soon as these two people go there, they're bringing with them the, the beautiful memories of their honeymoon. They're bringing with them their new fresh love for each other, a new sense of excitement about life. And then they step into this environment that is a pressure cooker. And any fears and any um, guilt or any sort of negative emotions that either of them might be harboring, either openly or secretly, just get amplified. You know, the original source material very much is supposed to feel like a ghost story. It is a ghost story. It's just not a supernatural ghost story. There is not a disembodied head of Rebecca floating around the house scaring people. There's not, you know, shadows moving around. I mean, obviously, as the new Mrs. De Winter is coming into the house, she's having to deal with her own sort of presuppositions of what's going on and dealing with the reality of it as well. But this is a ghost story that is much more humanized. 
The concept of gaslighting has gotten a lot of attention lately, and, and rightfully so. I mean, it's, this is something that's not new by any stretch of the imagination. People have always been making their adversaries try to look crazy in order to sort of neutralize whatever sort of pull or effect they might have. Uh, and in this one, you see that quite a bit, whether it be Danvers gaslighting the new Mrs. De Winter, uh, someone gaslighting Maxim, Maxim gaslighting someone. I mean, it, 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 it is, it's interestingly a story of so many independent people who have a hard time understanding the point of view of the other people. I mean, very few people in the story understand the perspective of Mrs. Danvers, and the same with the new Mrs. De Winter, and the same with Maxim. I love working with Ben. Uh, we've worked together before, and I hope we get to work together again. Uh, he's just such a fun director to work with because, A, he's very, very, very good at what he does. He is very efficient as a director, but also, he doesn't take it too seriously in a sort of stifling way. I mean, obviously he, he takes what he does very seriously, but not in a way where you're just like, dude, get over yourself. Uh, he, he has an incredible work ethic and a, and, a, and a sort of very almost blue collar mentality when it comes to work, which is just, you work hard. Lily is the perfect actor to play the new Mrs. De Winter. Uh, she brings a joie de vivre and sort of youthfulness to the part that for someone like Maxim, who has been through a lot and has seen m more than his fair share of trauma and all of that, she has this youthful innocence to her that, that is incredibly attractive and appealing. And Lily brings that so well. Um, she is also maybe one of the more professional actors that I've ever worked with. I think before every scene that we do, Lily has her script in one hand and the book in the other, and both of them look like tattered messes, just covered in scribbles, and her notes and things that she wanted to incorporate, but I like this line from the book more than this line from the script, so I'd love to do that, but also this line from the script is better than the book, but in the book the tone is this, so maybe we can blah blah blah. So she's constantly cross-referencing all of these different source materials, which is, which is really, encouraging and you know while you're in a scene to be doing that with someone um, and then Kristen is a force I mean Kristen Scott Thomas excuse me Dame Kristen Scott Thomas is a force to be reckoned with hi there movie lovers did you know that back in the day films weren't dubbed over in other languages instead it was common for foreign language films to take over a movie set at night and shoot their own version of the film for example, an old Spanish version of Dracula was filmed all at night in about half the time and even received better reviews. Make sure to click below to subscribe or on the side for more awesome content.